Ready? What's up, modern steaders? Today, we want to get this gravel over there and start getting ready for our outdoor kitchen. What we're doing is we're going to be doing what it's called an Alaskan floating slab. We're going to be doing a six inch concrete slab for our outdoor kitchen to be built on top of. We get a lot of frost here, so it's going to be able to move. So first we need a good layer of gravel, then we'll be going to doing sand on top of that. So we need to level this spot off. We don't have a transit, so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to be getting a rough idea of where my baseline is. Let's get going. I just want to know starting off if this ground spot is level and if it's not, which side is the low side. I have a good idea by looking at it, but I just want to get a little better understanding. So if you get a long piece of straight lumber and then put your four foot level on it, you're actually leveling the whole span and not just four feet. So we know this right hand corner is low and four feet it's down about an inch. So that's not too bad. Now I just want to take my board and run it this way and see how low it is over here. So my back corner is pretty low. And also what you gotta remember is my front corner up here is the lowest for this way. So we're gonna, this back corner is gonna need the most gravel so we can start here, work our way forward, and then just kinda keep a baseline going and we'll get it pretty level. So by doing that we can figure out where the best place is to start. We're gonna start in the back corner with loads of gravel and then we'll work our way forward and then we'll work our way that way and then we'll be taking our 2x10 and just checking it as we go. We're supposed to be getting now two inches of rain today. It's about 8 a.m. We have about till noon, 12.30, so we gotta try to get this all done. Let's get to it. a lot of weight on those tires so we need to put some air in these things they're getting pretty low we don't want to bust them off the bead so we got to take the time and fill them up with air
we're not going to bore you completely with showing you every bucket of gravel we dump, but we'll show you the process. So what I'm doing is, is I'm, I started here, marking my way here, and then I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm keeping an eye on how much gravel I have, so we make sure we can use it, and I can go back and I can add more and get a better depth to it. We still got, oh, we've used maybe a third of the pile so far, so we're doing good. Where we are putting the outdoor kitchen pad, this is very gravelly. We got a lot of big rocks, so I'm gonna take this stone, out, big stone out right here. But this part of the property is a gravel pit already, so I'm not worried about having a huge gravel base because, this, like I said, this is gravelly here anyway. I just want to have smaller stones, and then we're gonna do sand. So it's still the back corner over here that we gotta put more gravel in. And saying that side's actually high. It doesn't look like it right now, but the level don't lie. A little bucket of gravel down there. Let's see if that helps. That's pretty darn close. So I bet you if I took the hump out here, it'd be good. So I'll put a little bit more in that back corner. Now we can start working that way a little bit again. I'm happy with that. She's all there. Maybe you should have left it there. Nope. Is the tractor gonna pick that up? Yep. <laughs> You'll have to teach her how to do it. <laughs> you got some book in your hair. Or something. The roosters are having fun talking back and forth to each other. Watch your tootsies. Watch my tootsies. Yeah, I don't think my tootsies would appreciate. It. Do you think we have enough gravel? I do. We still got third left I think. I think we should have enough to finish this off and then hopefully grade it out. Maybe not completely to the driveway but get a nice smoother base to the driveway is the goal.
so we got done just in the nick of time. Well, it was raining while we were finishing. We were did the plate. You hear the rooster? That's one of the new Icelandic roosters learning to crow. That's crazy. We did the plate compactor a few times. Got it all nice. It's kind of funny. We knew this back corner was low. But look how low it was. This is why we put the outdoor kitchen where we put it because all back here, all back here would need a lot more fill. So there's a few things we were trying to keep in mind when we were designing where to put the outdoor kitchen. We wanted it close to the house, which it is. And if we put it here, we would need a lot of fill. And then in the winter time, I plow my snow here. So if I want to use it for the tractor, it'd be a pain. So if we keep it over here, I can still plow all my snow from my driveway straight here and I can park the tractor in here in the wintertime and be able to get out easy enough. And we used 18 yards of 3 quarter inch gravel here. Now we gotta get some sand, a couple of yards of sand, we'll form it up and then we'll put some sand in the center. We'll take you guys along for that. This is all we're gonna be able to do today. We're supposed to be getting just over an inch of rain. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice, so we'll see what we can get done. But over here we got at least 18 inches of gravel. We'll take you to the other back corner. Look at the back corner. Oh, that might be two feet over there and over here about a foot. This front corner is only a couple of inches. And that front corner is about the same as that back corner. But if you stand at the house, let's go back over here. So if you stand at the house, that looks pretty nice. I like that. You got a nice if you're coming from the driveway, you get a nice sweep to get in there. If you got the tractor in there for plowing, all the truck, if we need to work on the truck, plow all your snow this way. Your outdoor kitchen is close to your house. It's close to the garden. If we're doing butchering, it's right there. We have water and power here. We can run it over there. So that's kind of what we were thinking when we were figuring out where to put our outdoor kitchen. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping our channel grow. We wanted to thank you for that. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.